Paul is, who's not here to say, I told you so, but Congressman, <laughs> you did tell us so, that no good deed or good amount of U.S. aid goes unpunished. In the case of the Saudis, despite the fact that we keep buying their oil to the tune of $360 billion worth over the last decade. So, Congressman, you've been warning about this. What do we do now? Well, we should think about the American taxpayer. You know, uh, we just mentioned that they don't know which side to be on, the side of the military dictator that took it over with a coup or the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. What about the American people? And we've been in there too much. You know, it, just 60 years ago, we did the same thing over in Iran, and it's still going on, that problem. We overthrew elected uh, leader, Mossadegh, and we're still in a problem with, uh, with the Iranians. But no, uh, it, uh, Saudi Arabia gets a lot of benefits. Not only do they get our money, but they get our support. We protect them. We provide for them uh, their military protection. But the American people suffer the most. They pay all the bills. This idea that we can pick one group over another and think it's going to work out. And, and radical jihadists, I don't like them any more than anybody else, but we have to understand what radicalizes people, what makes them want to kill us. And it preci precisely is because we get involved underthrowing and over and controlling the government just how long how long did we support uh, Mubarak decades billions and billions of dollars no wonder there was a Muslim Brotherhood resenting it in the popular uprising comes and we join him and say yeah we've had enough of this uh, this Mubarak so we'll throw him out and have an election such hypocrisy they have the election we don't like him so we throw him out and we go back well now well, by the way Hosni Mubarak uh, is, is being in the process of being released so we don't know how that's <laughs> gonna go but I gotta ask you this guy. Congressman, um, if the Saudis are going to fund the gap with the Saudis, uh, with, with that is the Egyptians that we, we're taking away, then why do they always do that? Then, then why, why, why can't that be a litmus test? All right, well, you each look after yourselves. We're out of here. If we were out of, if we were out of the region and we weren't giving any benefits to the Saudis, which we do, if, if that were the case, I would say, let them do what they want. It's their neighborhood. They, the Saudis aren't going to come over here and tell us to deal how, with our, our own borders here, you know, with Mexico or something. We don't want foreigners coming here. So why should we be over there picking and choosing? They have more of a justification to deal with what they want over there than we do. But I so you're not worried, Congressman, about the Chinese or the the Russians who might try to fill the void and work this against us. I, I really am not. I, I think that uh, there's always that chance, but right now uh, the Russians are pretty weak, and that's not uh, the Chinese traditions. The Chinese tradition of the last 10 years or so is to work hard, save money, and buy up oil interests, not only in uh, Iran and other places, but they're acting like capitalists. I mean, that's, that's why they have the edge right now, not because they've sent troops out, they haven't done what we've done. We have troops in all these countries bankrupting our country, trying to pick and choose these leaders, and we always mess up. And we, we go back and forth. That's what is so ridiculous. And, you know, uh, you mentioned Mubarak being released. Ironically, many people say, hey, maybe Mubarak was better than the rest. Maybe we made a mistake by throwing him out, which I'm being very facetious. Right, right. But that's how, that's how silly it gets. So I think... The policy of neutrality, minding our own business, staying out of the internal affairs of other nations, having a strong national defense is pretty good advice. And that's about what is authorized in the Constitution. And I think it's sad that we get so involved in this mess, and it's endless. And it's almost like if you don't agree with those who say, well, pick sides and, and bash the brotherhood and do these things, that we're un-American. Or that we're not patriotic or something. Well, I think a true patriot would uh, defend America and uh, defend the American taxpayer and defend uh, a policy that doesn't invite us to get in the middle of all these battles and have, you know, the administration after administration flip-flopping all around. I mean, not only do we have this problem in Egypt right now, but what about Syria? Iraq is in shambles. Afghanistan is not. No, no, you're quite and right. But people, Congress, the battle people, is most vociferous with. In the Republican Party and about what will really define the Republican Party going forward is to, to support these type of democracy movements, whatever you want to call them, fairly elected governments. Again, this back and forth about who, who you support. But Chris Christie was in Boston last week saying that Republicans have over-intellectualized this, quoting from him and speaking to some fundraisers. I think we have some folks who believe that our job is to be college professors. He goes on to say that.